Hey YouTube, long time. Again, uh, thought I'd wait till after the holidays to make another video um, for a couple different reasons, but today I just want to do a mashup video uh, speaking about things that I have been wanting to speak about but haven't because I don't believe they deserve their own video. I don't think that there's enough content here uh, to justify a whole video for each one, so I will be trying to touch on each one uh, within 15 minutes. So, why taxing the 1% will not work? And I know there's going to be a lot of people who are going to fight me on this, but you need to listen. First of all, the monetary system is a complete scam. So, since that's the case, you can't win anyways. Um, but let's just take this into, and let's look at this uh, into context. You want to tax the 1%. So, let's just take this as an example. Let's use Pepsi as an example. You want to raise the taxes on Pepsi. Do you think Pepsi is going to take a loss? Do you think anybody in that company is going to take a loss? Or do you think that they're going to add whatever tax you put on to Pepsi to the cost of a Pepsi? Uh, that's exactly what's going to happen. So if you say, let's just say for instance, a carbon tax is placed on Pepsi, which would make sense um, if you believe in the whole global warming myth, uh, because they use carbon dioxide to uh, decarbonate their drinks. So they should have to pay a carbon tax, shouldn't they? Well, if Pepsi has to pay a carbon tax, let's just say 10 cents per can, you're going to pay 10 cents more per can. Pepsi is not the one being taxed, you are. You're begging for your own taxes. That's what this is all about, begging for your own taxes. Because you will never tax the 1% because they will always pass it on to you. So that's not going to work. I, uh, I think that was pretty cut and dry. I don't think I have to go any further into it than that. I think you should be able to completely understand what I'm talking about. Uh, what is truth? Now this is a serious question and you all need to pay close attention. My truth is not your truth. Your truth is not my truth. But in the end, there is only one truth. Now, we call this the truth movement, when actually we should be calling this the exchange of ideas movement. Because in the end, like I said, there is only one truth. There can't be 50,000 truths. One. And the information that I've been exposed to is not exactly the same information that you've been exposed to. And the experiences, the life experiences that I've been exposed to is not the same life experiences that you've been exposed to. So we all have a different perspective of what our truth is. Um, so whenever I can find documents to back things up, I love it. Um, because then it becomes fact. Um, and it can't be denied at that point. That is the truth. When you have documentation to back up what you are saying, your claims, and it's coming from a credible source, which is completely hard to find these days, um, that is what is ultimately the truth, regardless of what I believe or what you believe. And we have to change what we believe uh, to cater what is the absolute truth. Meaning, if we find something that contradicts what we currently believe, we have to be willing to abandon what we currently believe. If you can't do that, stop where you're at, get a hobby. And if your mind is not strong enough to question what you currently believe, get a hobby. I have stated uh, many times that the best way to find the absolute truth is to try and debunk what you currently believe and to try to prove what you don't believe. If you can take that step, the doors will open. All right, meditation. Uh, when people hear the word meditation, two thoughts come to mind, a hippie or a lunatic. Um, but the fact is everybody meditates, even if it's just when you go to sleep at night. Um, you are meditating when you have a dream. A lot of these dreams are speaking to you, whether you want to analyze it or not. They're telling you something. Um, I'm going to give you an example 
of one of my experiences, one of my personal experiences. I asked the question of what was existence, what was consciousness, and that is the key thing. You have to know which questions to ask before you even start meditating. If you don't have any questions and you're meditating, you're not going to get any answers. You have to have a question and you have to know what to ask and you have to know how to read the answer. Uh, so I asked this question, what is consciousness, what is existence? And I went into a dream and I saw a battlefield. I was surrounded by people shooting each other um, and it was just like this, this one guy across the field and me uh, were locking eyes and we were just looking at each other. We both had our rifles pointed at each other. Um, he never shot. I hesitated for a while and then I pulled the trigger. When I pulled the trigger, I saw that bullet hit him square between his eyes and then everything for me went black. Everything disappeared. I was standing what appeared to be uh, on a, uh, an invisible floor. I could not see anything. When I woke up, I realized the only reason why I exist is because he, that other person across the field was consciously observing me. So when I took him out, I no longer existed because I no longer existed in his consciousness. I no longer existed in his reality because I killed that part. I was no longer being observed. In order to exist, you have to be observed. We're all connected. That's basically what the bottom line is. We're all connected. Um, so that's just one example of uh, meditation. Um, I did a few Santa memes for Facebook. Uh, of course, my Facebook account was shut down. My uh, alternate Facebook account, the one where I share all my information, was shut down. And I'm being told that I have to send them a copy of my ID in order to reinstate it. And that's not going to happen because I didn't need an ID to start the Facebook account. So... And I'm not, I'm not, you know, this ain't Nazi Germany. I'm not showing an ID. I'm not showing my papers to use the internet. Sorry, it's just not going to happen. Uh, but I will share these memes with you today because they're very important. And I would like to give a shout out to Enter the Stars for uh, pointing one of these out, actually, uh, and inspiring me to make the meme. And uh, I definitely wanted to wait till after Christmas to share this because I have a feeling that it won't be very receptive if I do it before Christmas because there's a lot of people especially my ex who take great offense into this uh, she accuses me of trying to <coughs> excuse me she accuses me of trying to take away from my child's uh, childhood basically She's trying to take away uh, the the experiences that she should have as a child that's the way she looks at it but that's not the way I look at it um, I'm not gonna read them to you if you wish to read them you can pause and read these are just a few of the memes that I decided to make. Attention spans. Oh boy. I've covered this before talking about music and how it loops in the same four beats over and over and over again. I've uh, explained how 30 minute shows cram a day or a few days worth of excitement within 30 minutes. So then when you go back to your own life you're like why is things not happening um, and your attention just dwindles because it's not as exciting as watching this box which is why most of you have probably exited this video already. Um, according to the analytics, most people can't stand more than a minute or two of me talking. So, But now we have this thing called Vines. And <laughs> if you sit down and you watch Vines for hours on end, I can guarantee you, you would not be able to sit through this video. Your attention span is being destroyed. By design. And I did not realize how much power that this had until after I stopped watching TV for almost a decade. And then I tried to come back to it. Uh, and I stopped listening to music. And I tried to come back to it. Now, I can't enjoy TV. Because I'm too busy hearing the subliminals. 
I can't enjoy music anymore because I can hear the subliminals. I took a break, I came back, and now the, the programming is so obvious. There's only two shows that I watch on a normal basis anymore, and that's Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy, and that's the only two shows that I feel that are left on television that even challenge your mind. But even with Jeopardy, there are subliminal messages, and I might do a show on this one day, a video on this, um, where they have done Knights of Malta, they've done, uh, they've done Freemason, uh, sub, uh, they've, they've basically taken the actual truth and they've changed it. They've changed it, and since it's on Jeopardy, you believe it. They've even had Illuminati in the clues, so maybe if I can somehow find those different episodes and piece together um, and show you what what I'm talking about, I, I don't know, that, that probably would take me forever to do that, but maybe one day I'll be able to do that. But this has been going on for a while, and they've actually set up subliminals. I mean, I've got such a clear head since I've walked away from the TV that I can see what these subliminals were. Even from way back in the day, the price is right. At the end of every show, uh, there's a reminder, get your pet spayed or neutered to help control the pet population. Um, today... Uh, today, people have elevated animals like uh, dogs and cats above themselves. Today, we live in a world where the dog and the cat has more rights than the human. Today, we live in a world where if you assault an animal for any reason, you are catching a felony charge. Um, and this is, uh, I just I just want to speak specifically to the uh, Christians out there uh, who, who have read the Bible front to back 50 times and don't understand a thing. It says, plain and simple, black and white, you have dominion over the animals. It says it numerous times. The animals are not above you, and when you elevate an animal over the human, you are doing the opposite of what you've been told. Um, now, as far as, you know, let me give you an example. Michael Vick. Michael Vick. Should we, should we have locked him up? No. Should we have condemned what he did? Yes. Should we criticize what he did? Yes. Should we point our fingers at him as a society? Yes. But you cannot take man's life and exchange it for an animal's. That's absurd. Um, what, he, what Michael Vick did was absurd, no doubt. I'm not condoning what he did. I'm saying that he should not have lost years of his life because of it. Condemn him? Yes. Criticize him? Yes. Scrutinize him? Yes. Point your finger at him? Yes. But trade his life for an animal's? I don't see it. But we live in a world today where the animal has been elevated above the human. Nowhere in any religious text does it say to do that. And that brings me back to my original point. What The Price is Right basically has instilled in you is that we need to control the pet population. Now, how hard would it be for them to make the transition to tell you that we need to control the human population? Since you've already elevated the animals above you, and you're already doing it to the animals, how hard would it be for them to make the transition? Now, I know what I just said has upset a lot of people. Um, probably more than half of you if you've made it to this this far into the video. All I'm, all I'm simply stating is what I consider to be my truth and I think we're out of time so I'm gonna leave this video at that thanks for listening um, please take everything I say with a grain of salt and do your own research thanks